moving, don't stop, no. Keep on moving. And keep on moving. Hey! Well, this is, uh, you know, a, um, a fight prediction. I think I used to do these. I'm not sure, but just getting my feet wet again. <laughs> and this one is the Timothy Bradley, uh, Luis Carlos Abregu fight. Yeah, Abregu. And this is on July 17th. I want to get this out there. Just uh, kind of get stuff going. I'm getting ready to do a Wamma prediction and all that good stuff. But, you know, kind of get it back. And everything. This is, fight is at welterweight, so it will not be for uh, Bradley's uh, light welterweight title. Apparently he's taking this one kind of knock the rust off. If he doesn't watch it, he might get something else knocked off. Just throwing that out there. Uh, he's going against, uh, as I said, Luis uh, Abregu who is 29 and 0 and 0 with 23 knockouts for a 79% knockout ratio. Now, a majority of his fights have been in Argentina and he has gotten some easy KOs out of that. So his quality opposition isn't the greatest. He had a split decision against uh, David Estrada. And Estrada has fought a lot of top uh, welterweights out there. He's fought Mosley, Berto, a couple others and he's lost all of them. So he's decent, but he's not a great fighter. He's decent. He's a stepping stone guy. You get by him, you got a shot. Well, it went split decision. People thought he lost. Uh, he's bigger. Now, uh, Abregu is bigger on paper. I mean, he's 5'10". He's got a 73-inch reach, which is bigger than Bradley's at 5'6 six and 69 inches. Uh, he's the more powerful puncher in this fight with the 79%. And he's knocked out welterweights and, you know, things of the like. As he's fought bigger opponents. Uh, Gutierrez, who's actually a super middleweight, uh, and went. But now his, shit, his chin is meh. You know, he got dropped twice in the Garcia fight, was badly hurt, and looked like he could be taken out. Now, and I say this because while he has a monster uppercut and a massive lead right hand, and he's got the killer instinct, his hands are low and he's open for shots. And he can get hit freakishly flush. And with the way Timothy Bradley throws his shots, you know, he could get in trouble with those. Uh, he goes to the body occasionally. He's more of a head puncher. Even when he has you hurt, he still goes to the head as opposed to whacking you to the body to bring those hands down so he can land some more uh, clean shots. He does have the killer instinct. He does work well on the inside. But he tends to smother his own punches. Now... He drops his hands after he throws his punches, too, which will hurt him against faster opponents. He he's, has decent speed. He doesn't have great speed. And he's, uh, like I said, in the, your hand's low, you're in trouble. There are a lot of holes in what he does, and but he always has that puncher's chance because he has legit power. And uh, But he does tend to fade later in fights. Going over to Timothy Bradley, who's 25-0-0 with 11 knockouts, we know that he is a very veteran fighter, or he fights like a very veteran fighter, even though he's only got the 25 fights. Every punch he throws is with aggression. Now, he's not a pun power puncher, even though he does all this, because his KO ratio is only around 42%. He has very good wins over Lamont Peterson, who he you know kind of schooled, Kendall Holt, Jr. Witter, and but over the last three years in those six fights, and I'm not including the Nate Campbell no contest in three, but in the other six they've all went the distance. So he's not getting any KOs. You know he's not knocking anybody out. He's very active. He has lots of movement. He does a nice head body with the jab. He holds his hands a bit too low for my liking, but he has a lot of head movement in there. He's got that speed and that savvy, that that ring savvy. He's a good counter puncher. He leads you in. He has the good timing. Uh, he works inside as well. He throws the combos. And uh, as I said, he goes to the body more than uh, Abregu does. But he's not a massive body puncher. He has good stamina as he's went the distance in those last fights. You know, And he's won them all. So he can go the distance. He carries his ability late. He doesn't fade. He has a lot of very, very positive things going into him. They say he's the number one light welterweight in the world. I don't think he is. I see him at three. I think Devon Alexander, Amir Khan, those guys are better than him. But, you know, 
that's me. But in this fight, I think he takes it. I think it goes the distance. I don't see him knocking him out. I don't know if he has that power. And in order to do that, he's really going to have to get in close. But, you know, I don't think Abregu is going to knock out Bradley. You know what I'm saying? Because I think Bradley is going to keep his distance and keep him away and stay out of harm's way. And because of his movement and the way he can move around, I think Abregu is really going to struggle with this. Because he's not just going to get in there and flat out bang with him. He's going to use that in the angles and stuff, and I think he takes a unanimous decision. Now, uh, if you look at what has happened with Abregu, he can get hit and get hit flush. So in the Garcia fight, I mean, there's a legit chance maybe he does go down and doesn't, but he's got the heart and he gets back up. So, I mean, on one hand he can go down, but on the other he does get back up, and he's very dangerous when he gets up. But I'm still going UD, man. All right. Well, hey, <laughs> this is Big Ragu. If you like, comment, rate, subscribe. If you want to see more of my vids, go right there. And click on the link. It'll send you to see more of my vids. All right, well, hey, it's Big Ragu. I'm out.